We're gonna get AI up and running in VS Code today. This is a complete beginner level video. So even if you're not a developer, this should be approachable for you. So let's talk about when you'd wanna do this. So the whole point here is to allow AI to create and modify code on your local computer. This is something that applies for both developers and for low code, no code people. You would use VS Code if you are on Windows, particularly if you work somewhere that restricts your ability to install software. In most cases, VS Code will be whitelisted, meaning you can install that through your software center. Same with Python, and we'll get to that later. So some advantages here are that you can use different LLM models with this technique without paying for multiple subscriptions. And all of these methods work with MCP. So MCP is the thing that lets you connect AI to other systems. So people use this for connecting to their note-taking apps like Notion or Obsidian, connecting to whatever flavor of database you use like Postgres or SQL Server or things like GitHub. So the first thing we need to do for this is install VS Code and Python. If you already have VS Code and Python, then skip ahead. I put in chapters in the video description. But from the start menu, just look for the Microsoft Store, or if your organization restricts installs, go to your software center and search for VS Code here and install it. Next, we're gonna install Python. I like Anaconda. Anaconda Python comes with things like pip, the package installer, and some basic libraries that people use frequently. You don't get Anaconda from the Microsoft Store, you download it from the website. So Anaconda.com has a link for a free download in the top right corner. So don't do the sign up for free. That's just signing up for a newsletter. Um, you want the download link. And if you don't want to give them your email address, you can click the skip registration option down below the submit button. So this download button here, it seems to automatically recognize that I'm on Windows. We're just going to click that and there's our installer. So we're going to open that and next, agree. Just me, next. And I'm gonna check a couple of boxes here. The register Anaconda 3 is my default Python. So that helps VS Code see it. And I guess we can clear the package cache too and install. All right, so that's done. I wanna point out here too that the couple of places that I've worked that restrict software installs did allow Python and or Anaconda and they had it whitelisted. I don't know if that's a universal experience or not, but I'd be curious to hear from you all. So we're gonna finish this up here. So open up VS Code, just search for it in the start menu and open. So the first tool we're gonna to set up is is gonna be GitHub Copilot because it prompts us to set it up the first time we open VS Code. This is obviously what Microsoft wants you to use, okay? So when would you use GitHub Copilot versus other extensions? When your organization is paying for licenses for GitHub Copilot, then that's what you should use. I'm gonna go through some alternatives in a minute that are pay-as-you-go based, so you pay for what you use versus a monthly fee, but GitHub Copilot is a monthly subscription. They do have a free tier, but you will struggle to do real work with the free tier. Free tier, you don't get the high-end models. So you don't get the latest and greatest. And the number of calls that you can make is relatively small. Pro, you get unlimited calls with the middle tier models. So right now that's GPT 4.1. So you get unlimited with that and then you get a certain number of higher tier LLM calls. Those are premium. You don't get every single latest and greatest model. So for example, right now, Claude Opus 4 is not available on the pro tier. It is available available on the Pro Plus tier. So Pro Plus tier, you get more calls, you get all the latest and greatest models, so on and so forth. That's how the licensing works. So I'm gonna use the Setup AI button to connect GitHub Copilot, and that opens up a browser for me to log into GitHub. So you need a GitHub account for this. And then it wants to send that information back to the GitHub desktop, so I'm gonna click Open. All right, back to VS Code. So I'm gonna turn my camera off because it's on top of the buttons we need to click here. All right, the first thing you wanna do in VS Code is connect to a workspace, so that's opening a full Folder. That's going to be where your files are that you're working with. So I'm just going to go to open folder here and make myself a folder. There's this new workspace with copilot option here too, but when I tried that, it literally just opened an explorer window and told me to create a folder. So we're going to pick a folder like so. And we're gonna trust the authors of that folder. And that closed GitHub Copilot, but you can reopen it with this little icon in the toolbar up here. I'm currently using the middle tier of GitHub Copilot. So here's the models I have access to. I can do unlimited calls with GPT 4.1. That's what I'm gonna use for this demo. So GitHub Copilot has three modes right now. We have ask, agent, and edit. So ask is gonna be for asking questions. Agent is going to be when you want it to create and edit files for you. And edit mode, the difference between this and agent is that edit just 
just kind of suggests what you should do with your files versus actually going and manipulating them. I'm gonna move to agent mode and we're gonna try this out. I'm gonna do the same prompt in all three tools today so that you can see how they all function and what the differences are. So let's make this bigger so you can see it a little bit better. I'm gonna close that. So here's the prompt I'm going with. I am asking GitHub Copilot to make a Python script that gets the latest five videos for my YouTube channel, their descriptions, and puts that in a CSV. This is just an example showing that we can get things from an API, put it into a file. So I'm having it get my API key from an environment variable in Windows. If you're not familiar with environment variables, they're a important concept to understand. So if you search in your start menu for environment variables, this edit environment variables for your account, not system environment variables, but your account lets you store strings. So you can put API keys in here. That way, when your code references the keys, it's going to use a parameter there and pull it when it runs versus having that stored in text in your script. It's more secure. So when you open this up, you can create new variables in here. So just give it a name and a value. So we're gonna run this and see what we get. That took like maybe three seconds. So it's prompting me right now to install the Python extension from Microsoft for the Python language. I'm gonna say yes to that. It gives you like IntelliSense and that kind of thing for Python. All right, back to our script. I'm gonna tell it to run that. See if it works. And it did not work because it's missing a library, but it prompts me to install the library right here, which is really nice. And it also prompts me to create an environment. We're gonna do continue, make a new virtual environment. So Conda is an environment unique to Anaconda Python. So I'll go with that one, but you can use either one. This prompting to install libraries and create environments is very helpful for people that are not familiar with coding. It's one of those things that in the past you had to learn through trial and error and things not working and Googling errors, right? So here's the library install. We're going to do that. And we get prompted to run the script again. So it hit an error, but it's going to troubleshoot this itself and try again. It's not sure what's going on in the terminal, but it looks like the terminal says that it completed successfully. So let's go check our files. That was the explorer over here. We now have a CSV. I'm going to open this CSV and see what's in it. So here's our CSV file. So it successfully called the API and put that content in a file. Looks like we're now getting prompted to install rainbow CSV to make our CSV pretty and colorful. I guess so. Everyone likes pretty CSVs, right? Okay, now it's colorful. Cool. If you want to use MCP with VS code, there is a website, I'm going to link this in the video description, that has a bunch of MCP servers with a kind of single click install, although I guess it's two clicks on this website. So you just click the button next to these and it'll auto populate the MCP file. If I click one of these and click open, it's going to open it in VS code. You have the option to install the server in our user settings. It wants to authenticate. We're going to say OK, continue. You can choose your level of access here and we're going to authorize and open. And then you want to save this file. So it's a good idea to use GitHub when you're using AI to modify files so that you can fork and get versioning and that kind of thing. But that's not the topic of this video. I just wanted to show you where the MCP stuff was. OK, so on to the next techniques. So if you don't want to pay a monthly fee for GitHub Copilot and the free tier is not enough for you, you have an option of doing pay as you go with VS Code extensions. So. If I click the extensions button in the side panel here, I'm going to close all of this other stuff so that we have a clean space. So in extensions, if you type in Klein, hit enter, we have a couple of options here. So Klein and RuCode are some of the more popular AI integrations for VS Code. RuCode is actually a fork of Klein. So it's got a lot of similarities, but RuCode is a little bit more customizable. You have more modes for your AI. I'm going to go through both here. I'm going to install Klein first. We're going to trust it. So when it's done, it puts an icon on the left over here so we can open that up. And it's got some options for free models here, but we're going to use an API key. So I am going to be using Open Router today. Open Router is a service that lets you call virtually any of the LLM models with one API key. What this means is you don't have to have subscriptions to three different services if you want to be able to prompt in Claude, Gemini, and GPT. It's very useful. So OpenRouter is located at openrouter.ai, not .com. 
I'm not affiliated with them. I just think it's cool. So if you create an account here, you can create yourself an API key, copy it, and we're going to paste it into the extension. So back in VS Code, I'm going to paste in my API key. There's other options in here too. So if you wanted to put in a um, Anthropic key or OpenAI or whatever, you can do that too. So let's go. So here you have an option to auto approve, turn it on or off. So that's basically, will it ask you when it goes to create files or edit files? And you can choose whether or not you want it to be able to edit or just read. I'm going to let it edit files. If you want to change your model, you just click on this open router option down here. So right now it's using Claude Sonnet 4. To make this a fair comparison, I'm going to set it to the same model that Copilot was using. So that was GPT-4.1. Claude Opus is currently recommended as the best model for coding. So if you're wanting to get a really good output, I would go with Claude Opus, but do 4.1. And then Klein, your MCP servers are going to be this icon right here. And you also have your history up here. So if you want to go back and look in the version history. So Klein has two modes, plan and act. Plan is the architect hat. So it'll create a concept of what it wants to do and a list of tasks for itself, which helps a lot in getting a good output. Act mode is going to be the one that goes ahead and creates the file. If you're working on a complicated project, you're going to want to start in plan mode. Since my ask is relatively simple, I can start in act. I'm just going to paste it in. So this time I'm adding a line that says that I realize that the file already exists created anyways, because it'll notice that it's already there otherwise and um, try and run that instead. So we want to do a comparison of the outputs here. So you can see it's making a little plan for itself anyways, even though we're in act mode, created the file and it's automatically going to run the script. Let's go ahead and look at that file. So here's our CSV. This one is is quite a bit longer. So this has the full descriptions in here. So it tallies up exactly how much money it costs to run. So this costs me three cents, which is honestly a little bit high for GBT for one. Let's do Roo code now. Back to extensions. I'm gonna install Roo code. Trust it. And it's the kangaroo icon in the left sidebar. The same thing here. We can give it an open router API key. I'm going to select it from the drop down here, open router and paste in the key. I'm going to change this to GPT-4.1. I'll try running, running it in Claude Opus at the end so you can see if there's a difference or not, but want to be consistent here. And what I like about this is that it tells you exactly what the model supports when you select it. So for example, 4.1, supports images, not computer use, meaning it's not going to control your computer, and not prompt caching. That's very useful to know. You don't have to go look it up separately, right? So let's try this out. So Roo code in this drop down menu here, or pop up menu, I guess, has a lot more modes than the other two tools. So it's got an architect hat, coding, ask, debug, and an orchestrator. It's also got a marketplace where you can look at modes that other people have created. So you can make your own modes with this thing. So for example, we've got a document writer here. That's pretty cool, but I'm gonna close this. So I'm gonna swap from architect mode to code mode, but do check out architect mode because it's very useful. So start there. I'm trying to do a direct comparison to the other tools, so I'm not gonna use it today, but architect mode will like make you a flow chart and stuff and uh, ask you questions to try and tease out exactly what you're trying to do. So we're gonna send this. Looks like I asked it to use the wrong API and it recognized that. So that's uh, that's good. Here's our file. You can turn on auto proof here if you want to. I didn't. It didn't automatically run it for us. I'm going to tell it to run. So in real life, you could probably just open the script yourself because it costs you three cents to run this thing. So it's noticed that requests isn't installed. I guess it's not using the same virtual environment as GitHub Copilot was using because I'm pretty sure we installed it there. We're going to run that. Did the last one not install requests? Oh, it must have been using the right environment for the other one. I don't know. All right, let's try again. Task complete. Let's go check the file. There it is. So now for one more test, let's try running this exact same thing with Claude Opus. Not that this is a complicated task, so it may output the exact same thing. You never know. So in Roo code to change the model, you go to the settings icon here and then just select it from the drop down. So Claude Opus 4 is the latest and greatest at the time of this video. We're going to save that and done. New task. Let's paste in our prompt again. The so Claude Opus is asking to look at the prior scripts to make an improved version, which GPT didn't do. I guess I'll let it do this just for curiosity's sake. So it's trying to come up with some improvements of other things it could add to our script. Looks like it wants to add additional fields for us, which I didn't ask it to do, but okay, why not? Let's save and run. This one automatically asked me if I wanted to run it, which is nice. 
And it also looks like it is opening the CSV for me automatically. So that's cool. It seems like this is anticipating what I want much better, which may or may not be a good thing depending on what you're trying to do, right? So it didn't open the file, it just read the CSV file and told me what was in it. But there is a link to the file here, so I can just open it right from this window. There's our output. So now what I wanna do is I wanna have Claude make a comparison between the scripts to see which one was the best. I'm gonna go to ask mode, start a new chat here. So I'm gonna have it rank them. I'm not gonna tell it which is which, just in case that flavors the response, but let's see what it says. So apparently this one by Claude Opus ranked the highest got five stars. I didn't ask for a star rating, but okay. It explains why. And it points out the weaknesses. So you could follow up with a prompt that says fix the weaknesses. That's pretty neat. And it looks like second place. I think that one was the Rue code. And then third place was Klein. And fourth place was GitHub Copilot. So there you have it. Unbiased review, I'm sure. Oh my gosh, it made us a diagram. Can I open that? Oh, look at that. Uh, I don't know how useful this diagram is, but it's interesting. And it's interesting that V2 versus V3, V3 is superior in every way to V2 because V2 was Klein, V3 was Rue code. We use the exact same prompt in the exact same model for both of those. But the clear winner was the one that used Claude Opus in Rue code. Notably, it did cost almost 60 cents to run this prompt, but I think it was worth it. I'm going to talk about other options here as well. So these are your top choices for AI and VS Code. If you're not married to VS Code, there are other options. So Cursor, Windsurf, and Cloud Code are some of the other go-tos right now that do virtually the same thing as this, but Cloud Code is the newest of these. So that's the one everybody's talking about right now. I have a video on how to install that. Also, it's not as straightforward as you would expect, especially if you're on Windows. The difference between this and Cloud Code is that Cloud Code is a terminal meaning you just type into the prompt. So this one will let you edit things right in here. You can erase things, save them, that kind of thing. Okay, so I hope this was useful and thank you for watching. Have a great day.